there's definitely a reason why uh, the prophets, apostles, and messiahs are who they are and why there's so much um, focus and evidence, you know, about their lives and who they, you know, what they're going to do, where they're going to be, what they do, you know, and stuff. There, there's a reason why they're a focal point of people's uh, thoughts, language, and language and communications. Uh, and, um, you know, in, in ancient times, like with, um, uh, what's his name, Geronimo, Galatle, you know, they had good uh, communications and he was literally just talking with them, similitudes of himself. And when you do that, you become a paranoid schizophrenic. And you start, um, you develop these personalities and it's, you're, basically communicating in a paranoid, you know, competitive, aggressive, delusional, because you're hanging out with people like, like John Nash. Okay. He's an acute paranoid schizophrenic. Okay. And uh, when, you, you, when you're in their company, okay. I never had, I didn't have a lot of those issues until um, that I had to deal with until Sierra Vista. You know, as far as like worrying where someone's in the house, someone's doing this. And, and uh, when Amy was uh, having sexual relationships with the assholes at Fort Huachuca that are, you know, uh, uh, Jack Reacher, Jack Ryan, Tom Clancy type Peckerwood pussy plantation murderers. Right? So I never had those issues until we went to Sierra Vista and then things got real creepy. And it was like, you know, and Amy wanted to be a guy that was, I was better than uh, fucking uh Schwarzenegger's character from True Lies of Jamie Lee Curtis. Because I'm the Messiah and I uh, help everybody live the Lord's Prayer so we don't have to put up with that kind of bullshit as reality or entertainment. Right. And so, um, you know, no more boulders chasing Indiana Jones, getting our artifacts and antiquities that they consider more valuable than children being mass murdered in trailer parks. Right. So you got to understand how just how beautiful of a person I am and how important my life is uh, and when you understand the importance of my life you can start re, uh, you can start understanding the importance of your own okay if you don't understand the importance of my life then your life is you're basically just harrison ford you're you're a uh, uh you're a uh, patrick stewart you're uh what's that again? william shatner you know you're leonard nimoy all you did your whole life was just Pretend to be something you're not for make-believe money and totally deny the beauty of the Lord's Prayer and not have your children inherit that beauty. So do you see how important he is, how important the Messiah is, and how the things you are doing are so completely unimportant? You know, you, you don't run for touchdowns for millions of dollars to appease the devil and Satan and say Jesus told you to do it or you and Jesus talk about it all the time. No, he doesn't. He doesn't talk to you. He doesn't even know who you are. Okay. He only knows who you are when I watch the TV. Who's that? I don't know. <laughs> Didn't he play for like TCU or something like that? I don't, I don't remember. I kind of remember the kid. You know, me and Jesus and all that. It's like, you ain't talking to Jesus. No. Because I'm the guy like Jesus and it says so in the Bible. And it says, you know, that I'm anonymously tortured by the devil and Satan when I perform what's needed for the apocalypse. And that, you know, it's like a thief in the night and all these things. So, no, you ain't talking to Jesus because you're not listening to me. So if you're not listening to me, you can't get on TV and say, I'd like to thank Jesus Christ, Lord and Savior, for making money for the genocide operations. Okay, you ain't listening to Jesus. You're not talking to Jesus, okay? I talk with Jesus. I'm the living embodiment of the Lord's Prayer. If you're on TV and you say, God wants you to do this and Jesus wants you, that bullshit, bullshit, bullshit. Rockefeller, they'll gladly kill each other over me and my grandpa's money and watch you and your Jesus die, Parson. All right. Yes, David Rockefeller hates you. Yes, you hate David Rockefeller. You can't blame David Rockefeller for being you. All right. You're given the Bible. The Bible has the Lord's Prayer and you're clearly supposed to obey that command. Okay. If you're not doing that, it's not David Rockefeller's fault that you're an asshole that doesn't understand or, or it just simply steadfastly refuses to obey the commands of the Lord. Okay. So you cannot blame David Rockefeller for you being an asshole and not standing up to obey the commands of Jesus Christ or Lord Muhammad. 
How many people call themselves Muslims and run around in ancient garbs putting on a show that they're pious and holy and righteous and won't stand up for the Lord's Prayer of me? Oh, it happens on a daily basis all the time. Okay. And then I have to explain the gospels to these people that think they're living Islam, that think they're living Christianity, that think they're living the ways of Father Abraham and they are the Torah, right? So you, know, you got to understand just how important Earl, the son of Ralph and Mary, is to the world. Okay, not Elon Musk, not Bill Gates, not Mark Zuckerberg, not any of these, not Richard Branson, not any of these multimillionaires and billionaires that put up technology to keep manipulating everybody with make-believe money and had putting the planet and the species at constantly at risk. Okay, everything we do that denies the Lord's Prayer in the name of commerce, in the name of philanthropy, which is just taking idolatry, okay, and usury and putting lipstick on it, saying you're being kind, being a prostitute and a pimp, which is, ask Billy Holiday, it's not true. You can't ask Billy Holiday, she won't listen to you, she won't talk to you. <laughs> when she gets in her moods and she tries to talk to Jesus, I know who Billy Holiday is. All right, Dorothy Dandridge is another, you know. So there, there's, a, there's a few people from the past that said, you know, I talked to this and this guardian angel and this stuff, and and um uh, and it's like yeah I, we didn't talk much but we talked briefly and they're very angry and very upset and very abused because you guys suck and won't live the Lord's prayer but it's hard for people to live hey, listen what they basically tell people is you're, you're nothing like Jesus and you know when I die you know it's not true they think that it's magical thinking that's bad teachings wrong thinking taught by people that turn the teachings of the gospels into books and you can write down on a piece of paper that I am gravity and other assholes can be agree if it, it doesn't make me gravity, right? So I'm not saying I'm God and I'm not saying like Marvin Gaye on what's happening with, you know, he makes his, you don't talk about my father, you know, Jesus is my friend. I don't make the snow. I don't make it rain. I don't sit there and conjure. I'm, I don't work with harps at, at, at Peterson Air Force, or, you know, and up in Colorado Springs and manipulate the clouds and see the clouds with shit from airplanes and say, I don't do shit like that. Okay. I don't make it rain and say, I did it. I am God. I'm more powerful than God. I don't do shit like that. I'm not like these wackadoodles on television and that uh, have the conditions for mass media. Okay, guys, what would you need Facebook for if you're living the Lord's Prayer? To keep, keep in touch with your army buddies, you wouldn't have army buddies. Oh, he's right. You don't need to ask for money on Twitter for that guy to have his little cart to get around in because his body was destroyed by psychopaths that use money to manipulate people. You just basically say, hey, dude needs a cart, man. He got his legs blown off back when we were idiots and not living the Lord's Prayer. Okay, so we'll get him one. You don't need the Twitter community with fake money saying, we're doing great things with the, with the devil's money. Yeah. Share, care, give us according to these, build the last. Ah, some proverbs in that house, right? And you don't need to constantly, you don't need to trend and get advertisers to show up and sponsor your bullshit, okay? To make money from home doing, you know, I stopped watching James's thing because I just don't like EA Sports. You know, I, I just don't like them. I played 2006 the other night. And you can't please everybody. The only problem with 2006 is you get way too many black guys on BYU. <laughs> black quarterbacks like this. Um, they have the, the numbers right on 2006 as far as players at position and things like that. Right. So what I do, the only team I have to fix and adjust on 2006 to 2012 when I played those was to go to BYU and put more white players named Ammon Smith on BYU. Ammon Smith, you know, they, never mind, weren't raised Mormon. Okay, Ammon Smith, get it? Joseph Smith, Ammon, okay. <laughs> it's funny. It's it's like McLovin or, or, or uh, Muhammad Lee on the Big Bang Theory. Okay, so, but then, no, that's what I do. You know, I just put a lot more white guy. I, of course, lead black kids, especially cornerback and in certain skill positions and stuff. And then also the thing I'll do because I do that a lot with uh, on the ones that have this screwed up with too many white cornerbacks and stuff on the ones they have now. I go and I change a lot of the kids 
on the uh, Utah teams to um, Polynesian. Okay, when I make dynasties with the Utah teams, I make a lot of them Polynesian because there's a lot of Polynesian kids, and they have a lot of uh, they have a big influence with their uh, their uh, religion is very appealing, or their their cult is very appealing to the cult cultures of the Polynesian islands. So yeah. Uh, me, you know, I don't believe in fantasy and I don't believe in cults. You know, my faith's always been, that's how I, how I kicked Spencer Chase Kimball's ass before I turned four. Was a uh, cartoon ain't real and so he goes and just obliterated him. And I wasn't even four years old yet. That man was like in his 80s. A major head of a multi-conglomerate corporation that did uh, 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 domestic spying for the U.S. government. They still do. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so. Anybody want to get paid for your pest simonial for a pimento chicken sandwich and think you're living the ways of Christ our Lord? <laughs> but that's the way these kids are, you know, and that Hopkins kid. No, Jesus always tells me I was there and he's not trying his best. Is he standing up for the Lord's Prayer? Well, I don't want to hear that bullshit. He's not talking to me. Okay. So don't ever get on TV when we're post apocalypse and I'm on YouTube and tell everybody I'd like to thank Jesus for this fake ass uh, hoe cake money. And me fighting like hell for hoe cake money for kids to get raped to death and human trafficking all across the world. And won't stand up with Lord Ralph Earl Parsons Jr. in New Mexico for us to all live the Lord's Prayer and save ch uh, children from being uh, abused by perverts. So don't do that. And no, we're not fucking going to Disneyland or Disney World. Why would I want to go to a music par a propaganda amusement park when I could stay at home, love my wife, breathe fresh air, drink clean water, and eat healthy food and have beautiful shelter? I'd rather I'd rather sing songs and play ball and go hiking with my kids and love my and love my wife than go to an amusement park for propaganda or a propaganda setting with a bunch of assholes who make lots of money and have no idea what's whack and what I told you guys with the thing with SoFi, you're gonna make in SoFi and the one in uh, Vegas, you're gonna build there's no BP in them, and that was right. I didn't know how I was gonna be right, but I was right. The first games they played in there was during COVID protocols, and no one was in those fucking whorehouses to watch them put on a hoe show. Want to make another Gladiator movie? Oh, great, Ridley Scott. 